So, hi everyone. My clock says it's now 10 past uh, 12. Uh, welcome, I'm Thorsten Lemus, and I want to tell you about um, how to report, report your Linux kernel back in case you ever encounter, uh, encounter one. The thing is, uh, reporting a Linux kernel bug is kind of easy and kind of hard at the same time. Um, if you look at the documentation in the Linux kernel, how to actually report, yeah, there's a, a short guide actually that's just three paragraphs and uh, three or four more that uh, explains some general stuff and it all um, fits on one page. But if you look closer, you'll notice that uh, if you print this whole document, um, it's uh, 35, uh, 34 pages or depending on your layout. Um, but in the end, it um, uh, explains you all what you need to do in the reference section, so you don't need to do that. And to get a fear out of it, reporting a Linux kernel bug can be easy. This one with just a few paragraphs and a few uh, lock, uh, line of the lock is actually totally fine. This one is as well. Uh, I'll explain later what, what they are, uh, why they are totally fine. And you can look at them uh, uh, in more detail in the slides. Uh, the thing is, they are brief, nevertheless um, cover all the important aspects to get developers interested. And that's the, the important part here, um, because quite a few reports actually fail to do so, and uh, don't, uh, due to that don't even get a single reply, and obviously the, the, the problem remains unfixed as well. That can easily happen, as developers are not obliged to fix each, each and every issue. Um, um, they're only obliged to fix a certain, certain kind of problems. It's a bit like, like a community build playground uh, that's um, completely maintained by, by, by volunteers. The commu community as a whole has an interest to ensure everything is and stays uh, safe. It also doesn't want uh, to, um, the, the kids to cry because anything they liked or loved uh, break, uh, breaks when somebody is uh, changing something. Yeah, and maintainers, the Linux kernel maintainers actually make sure to do both things. But, but just because you helped building this playground like maybe 10 years ago or last month or improved something, uh, you're not obliged to, to uh, um, further improve it because it, yeah, you, it was just a volunteer volunteering to help here. And fortunately, it's, um, the good thing is most developers are actually really committed to help with um, all sorts of issues you have to with the Linux kernel. But the thing is, uh, life is sometimes complicated and uh, uh, they can only do so if, if their time permits. And uh, unfortunately, most kernel developers have much on, on their plate already and uh, are overloaded with work or issue reports. Yeah. And then those not that good reports actually are often the first things uh, that fall through the cracks and get ignored. Yeah, and that's basically why you really want to, want <coughs> uh, to submit a decent report to make sure it uh, gets the developer interested and to, to make them look into the issue. And that's why I'll show you how to, to do that. The first section uh, are actually mainly preparations on your side to make sure everything is fine. Uh, it's actually uh, 11 steps I, I broke this down to. The first one is actually to kick everybody out that um, it's not really up to the task. It sounds a bit harsh, uh, but it's in the, in the interest of the reporter because you have to ensure you have a kernel that's actually suitable for reporting bugs upstream because the uh, Linux kernel developers don't care about most um, kernel uh, kernels used in the wild and, and the bugs with it, um, because um, many of those kernels contain enhancements uh, um, uh, that con might contain the, the bug you face. They are added by your Linux distributor, the distributor, your hardware vendor, maybe your admin, or you did it yourself. Yeah, and that's why um, they enhanced um, and considered modified <laughs> built from modified sources, uh, for example, like those in, 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 in Ubuntu, and um, that uh, makes them unsuitable. And uh, loading externally developed uh, modules is actually the same problem, because in both cases, it's simply not the kernel that Linux developers um, build. They are just not vanilla, as, you, as it's, uh, 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 it's a term for that. So you, when you're using such a kernel, you have to choose, report the issue to your vendor, or be willing to install a vanilla kernel yourself later. Uh, later is in, uh, um, important here because you don't need to do that right at the beginning. Um, um, the thing is, when you <coughs> report the issue to your vendor, that's often a dead end because they are overwhelmed with uh, reports as well, and there's only so much um, um, uh, people working on the distributions, they can't take care of everything. That's why um, 
um, you often will have to be uh, willing to install a vanilla kernel yourself later. And that's actually not that hard as it sounds. There are pre rolled ones and compile, um, um, that are easy to install, or compiling is also not that hard. We'll get more uh, into the details later. The second thing you should do is search for exis existing reports to join. That's just like with every, every other open source project, you to check if somebody else reported this, uh, the, the problem already, because that can save you a lot of time and trouble and other people as well if you don't um, report a bug or, uh, in detail, or <coughs> again, that's already reported and tracked and maybe even worked on already. So how to do that? Yeah, you could, yeah, and, and to, then you can immediately join discussions um, on that. How, so how to do that? You actually, yeah, you just uh, take your preferred uh, internet website and search. For example, in this case, Linux I, uh, <coughs> I, I, we are Wi-Fi connection fails, VPA 6, it's, I made, uh, made that up. Um, and um, that often will lead you to, to some results already. And there are many mailing lists where, where the Linux kernel developers are discuss, um, discussing things and where uh, bugs are reported. That's all on law.kernel.org. There's an, um, um, a search function there in law.kernel.org slash all. And there you should also try uh, to look for existing bugs. And uh, when doing so with the, with the search engine, remember to, to vary your search um, terms a few times because um, um, sometimes people use different words or a different um, approach to things, and um, that's something that's really important because it often helps you to find bugs you otherwise would have missed and can save you a lot of, lot of, lot of time. That, so don't ne neglect this and uh, invest a few minutes or 10 or 20 in it. Yeah. The next thing you should do is classify, is it a severe problem or a regression? And those are actually the bugs um, that the Linux kernel developers are obliged to fix, and um, yeah, that's why they sometimes require uh, special handling, and that will be, become relevant later. A severe bug is actually something really, really bad, so not that <coughs> it's not that something doesn't work. It's really some security vul vulnerability or something causing data loss or damaged hardware crashes, something like that. And the regression is actually when something breaks that <coughs> Um, when you're updating your kernel version, that's as I said earlier, you don't want things to break that people love. And that's the same for the Linux kernel. And uh, that's why they are, there's a special handling for that. Um, the kernels have to be um, compiled with actually a similar um, configuration. If you want to know details about it, um, there's, a, there's a special configuration target to do that. It's actually described in more detail in the Linux kernel documentation about regressions if you have such a problem. Next thing you should do is, well, what you always should do with open source project projects is uh, check if your setup, setup is actually causing your problem because that can help, uh, can happen all the time and can self, save yourself and others a lot of time and trouble again uh, because uh, you won't have to uh, report a bug that actually isn't one. Um, the few things you should always do to make, the, make this work is always give um, a dmessage output um, and look out for red and bold things that of, often tell you if something's wrong. For example, if a firmware file is missing or something like that. Yes, yeah, so you should also think if, uh, if the hardware might break, that happens, or some other update like BIOS grub uh, is causing the issue, or some, um, some change in the BIOS setup is, uh, is, is uh, the reason why the kernel uh, suddenly misbehaves. And obviously, you shouldn't, shouldn't overclock and uh, use pro proven tools. Apart from that, that actually um, <clears throat> depends a lot on, on the problem you face, what you need to do uh, on the context of it. For example, if you have um, a problem with a file system driver in the kernel, um, then you should really check the file system over the FS check tools uh, to see if there's something wrong and that confuses the kernel. That uh, can uh, often, uh, the, those tools can repair other things and um, yeah, and then the kernel reboot, you can reboot and things work. But as I said, it depends on the issue, what you need to, f um, d need to f uh, check. Sometimes Googling helps uh, to find similar issues and what people suggested to, to um, you, you, you should check. So the fifth thing is uh, create a f um, fresh backup and put system repair tools at hand. That's actually not strictly use needed for, for reporting the kernel. But um, when you're looking into the system and trying to figure out what's wrong or what kind of bug it is, it's better to be prepared for, for emergencies uh, during further tests. The sixth thing actually you should do is, um, 
ensure you're uh, not using any externally developed mod modules. We also already covered uh, this vanilla aspect. Um, yeah, because um, such bugs uh, modify the kernel and they can cause um, areas in totally different uh, areas of the kernel. So that's why your NVIDIA graphics driver, for example, uh, might break your Wi-Fi or your kernel memory management. And it's really anything but obvious to uh, that it's the NVIDIA driver that's causing this. It uh, can happen. That's why these drivers need to be out, if uh, <coughs> easily be, be removed from the system when you're reporting a, a uh, Linux kernel bug and it, the important thing it's irrelevant uh, if the driver is open source or propriety um, because it's just yeah it's ex um, it changes the kernel in ways uh, that can cause all bugs and it's not vanilla anymore so it's not the, the thing the Linux kernel developers build and yeah then you are on, are on your own so hence disable uh, solutions that build modules on the fly like DKMS, DKMS and re remove all modules they might have installed and we, yeah, that actually might mean that you have to uninstall the NVIDIA driver. Next thing you should do is ensure that the kernel is not tainted before the issue occurs. occurs. Um, the, the tainted flag is set actually when something unwanted or really bad happens with the kernel and the, the kernel notices. Um, because when, when such a thing happens, um, it can cause any other sorts of issues. Um, that might be follow-up errors and uh, that's why the kernel marks itself as tainted then. To do that, you can simply look it up in the, in the um, um, PROC file system and it should be a zero. If it isn't, um, I'll refer to the documentation at the, this point because it gets too complicated here. It explains what you, what you then need to do and uh, what this number actually means because this number um, um, is, a, is actually a bit field and explains what kind of issues actually made the kernel tainted. Um, but in the end, it's, um, most of the time, it's a bad idea to report problems that are occurring with a tainted kernel. And uh, that's why you shouldn't do that. But don't lose your mind over it now, because you might need to install a, um, a different kernel later. So maybe it's not, not tainted, but, but it's good during debugging, pre during preparation to check if, if such a problem is there, because it can save you also uh, time. One of the few exceptions is actually the first, oops, so a kind of um, problem the kernel detected and um, catch and could could um, uh, carry on afterwards, but it might might be not running perfectly well. That's why why it um, uh, uh, taints itself. Then, if that's the problem, then it's okay to to report that bugs and not any further follow up. Uh, oops, oops, because they might might be caused by this. Next thing is also in your own interest. Write down briefly how to reproduce the issue. Because that's uh, actually the best basis for the for your reports later, and also interesting to f uh, or, or, or of interest for your further experiments to know how you you can um, um, uh, um, reproduce it. Um, because um, <coughs> um, if you're dealing with multiple reports, it got quite quickly can get confusing. And if you're doing this with a different kernel, it um, it really helps to have uh, have it uh, stripped down to and um, on, on a paper how to reproduce this. Um, the next step is also in your own interest. It's uh, if it in case it's a regression within a stable or kernel series, series say for example 5.15.4 uh, to 5.15.5. That's a, a special case. And um, in that case, you can take a shortcut because those bugs um, are a little bit special. Um, the the um, documentation in, in the Linux kernel that explains how to report bugs actually has uh, the four steps you need to perform then explained. It's basically um, also installing the latest kernel from that series and checking if the problem is there. And then you can uh, simply report a quick um, quick write a quick mail, hey, is this known, to check if, if, if the problem is, is known already, because that's often the case. And it saves you also some trouble. Um, the a third, uh, the tenth step is actually something uh, that's a little bit annoying with the Linux kernel. You need to locate the driver or subsystem that seems to cause an issue. You have to apply your best guess, because there's no central place where Linux kernel bugs um, can be reported. And uh, that way, when you find, um, when when you apply your best guess, you find the place where um, bugs need to be reported to later, and also the place where you can look for existing reports. Yeah, 
The thing is, most people assume that uh, kernel .org, uh, Bacilla kernel.org is the place where every uh, kernel bug can be reported. It also looks a bit like this. But there's a hint there, if you look closer at that, uh, the, um, and the document it points to, it actually tells you that most of the time, um, Bugzilla is a bad idea to, to, to use, because most of the, the, the Linux kernel developers don't use this. There's a lot of, there's a big, big risk that nobody will look into reports that you file there. But a few, few uh, subsystems actually use it. So where, where do you need to look in, in, instead? Um, yeah, you, most of the time you need to submit your report by email. Most of the time to the maintainers um, um, and a few public mailing lists in, in, in a CC. And that's actually, uh, f um, you find those addresses from them in the maintainers file. Uh, for example, this is for the ButterFS system, uh, an entry where you uh, see, hey, I need to file a report this um, bug by mail to these three uh, maintainers and this mailing list in CC. Ideally, you also CC the Linux kernel mailing list, but that's not that crucial, yeah. Uh, thing is, a few subsystems uh, prefer to get reports via some bug tracker. And sometimes that's actually bugzilla.kernel.org, rarely uh, some Gitforge. Um, for example, the ACPI and power management people, they um, prefer actually bugzilla.kernel.org. And uh, um, developers of various graphic drivers uh, in the Linux kernel, like those for AMD and NVIDIA and, uh, and Intel graphics, actually prefer. Uh, they have their own GitLab instance and on free de freedesktop.org, and that's where you need to re report the, uh, the bug. Yeah, and once you know where the bug la later needs to be reported, you should check the, re um, the archives of that place for existing reports. Yeah, again, that can save you a lot of trouble because you don't need to further analyze the problem if, if, if you can just join interest uh, um, um, existing discussions. So that's it with uh, the preparation and actually ends the first section of this talk and brings us to the second. Um, this is actually now you, you're going to test and report the, the problem. So to do that, you actually need to reproduce if the uh, issue still happens with the latest kernel. And then for that, uh, you really need to install a, a really fresh kernel, ideally the main line, so the main development branch, um, to check yeah, if the problem is, is fixed already, somebody has fixed it already. And to do that, you go to kernel.org and um, actually check um, which the current mainline version is. Here in this case, it was 5.17 RC7. And um, yeah, then you really should use that version. One that's a week older, say you have RC6, might be okay, but it's better to really try the, 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 uh, the freshest version. And yeah, and remember to ignore the big yellow field because that often is a bad idea because yeah, that points to the latest stable kernel, but you want mainline because um, um, yeah, every bug is fixed there first. And uh, you don't need to fear those too much. They are pretty stable. And yeah, well, you created those back up, that backup I told you earlier about it, um, just in case something goes wrong. But it's, that rarely happens, especially that late in the cycle. And, uh, but you really want to test that branch, the main de development branch, because each and every bug fix is, is really fixed there first. And, um, um, and the thing is, some bugs are fixed only there. Um, because sometimes it's simply too, too dangerous to, to backport um, a, a bug fix to older kernel series. And that's why older, older kernels, say 5.19, uh, 5.4, uh, 5.10 right now, um, contain many bugs that nobody will ever fix. Uh, they are known be because it's simply too dangerous to fix them. You just should use the latest version. Um, to, to, uh, if, if you have such a bug. Yeah. Um, there's an exception from the mainline rule if the kernel.org looks like this. So, so if the stable version has a higher number, uh, then you should use that. That actually happens right after a, lace, up after a release, maybe for, for one week or two weeks sometimes. And um, um, other times you better avoid stable, but it, it's okay. If, if you use the latest stable kernel, most kernel developers uh, will actually look into the issue. And uh, so, so you can, for example, use it if um, mainline doesn't work for some reason. The long-term kernels you see in the bottom left kernel, that, those are really um, a bad thing to use for reporting bugs. As I said, 
They contain many bugs that are never fixed. Um, it's, it doesn't help anyone, and, and it, it's, uh, not <coughs> the kernel developers uh, that receive your report will think, hey, maybe that was already fixed half a year ago. Uh, I, I don't have time to look into this right now, and then ignores your report, and that's something you don't, don't want. That's why you really want to look into the uh, test proof of the latest kernel. So how to actually in install a really fresh kernel? Yeah, there are pretty well built vanilla kernels available for many distributions. Um, um, you have to just uh, add a PPA or an, an, uh, a copper or something um, where you can install the um, a vanilla kernel. Actually, there are uh, also some big distro distributions that, low, low, uh, uh, that have them by default in the repositories or use them actually by default. Um, sometimes those are really only slightly patched, then it might be okay to use them. Um, but it's always a little bit dangerous because some maintainers um, still ignore them. So ideally, you actually compile, compile um, the kernel yourself. Um, that actually might become necessary for debugging and testing later anyway. And um, it, it might sound complicated, but it's not that complicated with, um, with the make targets, make old config and local mod config. You can e easily con create a config that doesn't compile that long and, um, or, uh, and uh, it's relatively easy to, to handle. And um, yeah, then uh, um, uh, you have uh, uh, with the usual make targets like um, um, make vset image and um, install and modules install. You can I install that kernel and you have quickly a, a, a fresh kernel uh, on your system to, to test. Thing is, when you're doing that, is um, remember to e ideally de um, activate uh, these two config options, at least if you're dealing with a stack trace, because um, then you can check la later check um, which uh, line of code the problem actually uh, uh, happens. So. Next step is to ensure the kernel uh, doesn't taint itself because you have, have now a different kernel. You need to check this again. Yes, uh, we already covered this, but it's good to check it um, um, earlier already because then you know um, something is wrong on your system and uh, not worth reporting. That's why, I'm, why uh, this is here a second time. Yeah. Now you want to check um, if the problem actually still happens with the kernel um, in case it was already fixed. That was quite easy. And yeah, if it is, simply stick to this kernel um, or install the latest stable or long-term kernel to check if they are fixed there. And if that's not the case, so in case you want to um, uh, use them, um, and if it's not fixed there, look up this uh, reporting issues document I mentioned a few times already, because it just uh, explains you what you can do if you find a bug that's fixed in mainline but not, not in older series, then you can check if um, maybe motivate developers to bug fix, uh, to, to backport the bug fix. But if that works out, always depends on, on, on the uh, problem because as I mentioned, some fixes uh, are simply too, too risky to backport. Yeah. <sighs> now we're getting closer to re re reporting the issue. Then so um, we're getting to the point where you should optimize the depiction of uh, how to pr reproduce uh, the issue. Um, to make it easy, really easy to uh, grasp for others because I'm seeing a lot of bugs that are really complicated and uh, where I have to read the text three times on, and uh, to un actually understand the problem and, um, or read five uh, paragraphs that are completely uh, strange to read. That, um, that uh, bears always the risk that uh, the developers will ignore your report in the end. And so really try to find a, a, a more straightforward way um, to describe and uh, reproduce your issue. And uh, make, also make sure the depiction is easy to understand for someone that hearing about the issue for the first time because that's, those are the people you want to address. And if you're an adopt, uh, adopt uh, ask somebody else um, uh, to read your text before you submit it, that often helps. Um, and if you learn something in this um, process, consider looking again for existing reports that can op often help. Yeah. I mentioned the stack traces already. Um, if you have one, consider decoding them. That those are the, the kind of strange looking lines and numbers that sometimes show up when you have a panic and oops or warning or something. Uh, so this stuff here. Um, as you can see, there's um, uh, uh, the, most of the lines end with some, some random numbers. And by decoding them, you can actually 
check um, the line where the, um, where the uh, uh, error actually uh, occurred and how, it, how this code actually was, uh, was called and that often helps um, the developers to, to, um, uh, to find out what's wrong. And, um, but if that's, that's a little bit hard, um, if, uh, if you don't want to do that, you ha don't have to, you can submit a bug first and then um, well, uh, see if it's really needed and, uh, but you maybe should really prepare for it and that's why I mentioned this uh, config options earlier because they make sure of that. Um, if you want, really have to do that, check the documentation and reporting issues that explains actually how to decode the issue with a self-compiled kernel and also with uh, um, packages that contain debug info packages, for example, for uh, RPI, for Fedora and uh, SUSE, um, that's possible. So if you're dealing with a regression, there's some extra work here. You need to find out, um, uh, uh, narrow down when it actually started, started actually as much as possible. Yeah, because when, when done properly, it actually identifies the exact uh, change that's causing the prob uh, problem and gives you, uh, it nearly guarantees the timely fix because then you know who, who has to take care of it. And um, probably actually means bisection. That's actually where you take the distance between two kernels and uh, compile, um, so, uh, so uh, compile in the middle. So if you have uh, distance between, uh, if a problem shows up in 5.16 and wasn't present in 5.15, you co compile these two first to check if they are not uh, uh, showing, uh, if the uh, earlier problem um, doesn't show up there. And then you come, jump to the middle between those two versions, check if it's um, happening there, if it's happening, uh, if it's not happening there, you get closer to 5.15 and you can narrow down the, this way the exact change um, that's causing the problem. Um, with a lot of, uh, normally with current kernels, it's about 15 or 16 steps uh, to actually um, find the change that's causing the problem. That sounds like it's taking days, uh, but with a modern system and a proper configuration that can sometimes be done in, in an hour or something. And it's even possible to automate this with a script. Um, yeah. And, uh, but if you uh, don't want to do all that work, um, feel free to f just send a f is this known uh, inquiry uh, report and uh, just mentioning the, the brief version range. Because if somebody already looks into the issue and reported it, and it might be uh, bisected already, and you can save yourself work, uh, some, quite some work. But yeah, be prepared that it might be needed um, because um, um, bisections, uh, uh, regressions that are not bisected might remain unfixed if, if the problem can't be found. That uh, shouldn't happen, but it does, it does sometimes. Now, now you're getting to um, compile and submit the report because you have everything done you should do, uh, everything prepared for that um, and everything is at hand. Um, so take the depiction how to reproduce and add a par paragraph uh, describing the environment, the kernel version, the tain status, um, the Linux distribution used, the hardware used if relevant, if there's a regression, when did it start? And, uh, add uh, or link all relevant details. Uh, so uh, if you logs or the decoded uh, stack trace, what's needed is actually depending on, on the type of, to, uh, type of issue. Um, for, for example, the D message and the config for the kernel is often relevant. If you have something to do with uh, kernel and LSPCI, um, output often helps. But the slides are online, so you, if you ever have to go through it, you can uh, 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 check, check this out in detail. And um, if you add or link to the, those uh, uh, logs, it's not really important. Linking is often the, more, uh, the, the uh, better thing because it keeps the, the mail relatively uh, short and uh, because big attachments sometimes take longer or get, get ignored or get into the spam folder. So simply uploading them somewhere and linking is, is uh, often the best, best choice. Um, on top of those, uh, on top of what you have now, install, um, create a, a normal length paragraph that really outlines the, the issue and the impact quickly to make sure everybody that uh, reads your report can, can immediately get what's, what's it about. And uh, to do that even better, you, you should work out uh, even um, better and, and descriptive title that says an says, uh, important thing in, in just a few words. Um, because that's, that's what most of the people that, that read your report later will, lead, will, will read. 
Um, if you face one of those uh, severe um, problems or regressions I mentioned, check out the, the document, uh, the, the, uh, the, the reporting issues document again, because it has a, um, a section of what you need to do in that case um, to make sure it's getting fixed. It's not that much, but I won't go into the details here. And yeah, make sure the end result has all the important details but it's easy to understand for outsiders and as short as possible. And yeah, submit it to the place um, where the maintainer's file told you. As I said, th this is uh, perfectly fine. This is a report, it's the one from earlier. Just one paragraph that basically uh, describes the problem, the, the crucial line from the logs that shows where things went sideways and the question uh, if the problem is known and some logs, so that's totally fine. And it's especially sent to the right people um, in uh, to NCC field. That's the same just with, with a regression. The regression mailing list is in CC there, and it looks a little bit different. Look at the slides later if you are interested in, in the details here. Yeah. In the end, the, the important thing is they were the reports uh, came through the uh, appropriate channel. Um, the description is easy to grasp, but they make it obvious as a, if it's a bug or a regression and that the kernel that was used was um, a fresh vanilla and untainted. Uh, untainted. Yeah. And now that the report is out, your work is not done. You need to keep the, the ball rolling somehow, uh, somehow in one way or another. Um, because um, developers might have asked questions or uh, might um, want to see you to, to run some, some tests to narrow down the issue. If you get such an inquiry, or it, try to, to um, um, ask, uh, answer it quickly, not, not wait a week or two, because then the thing is um, the, the developers might forget about it or they might go on holiday and then it actually uh, gets ignored in the end. Uh, so really um, react publicly in a, in a timely manner here. And keep in mind, um, most developers are, are overloaded with work and they go on vacations too. So if, if your report um, doesn't get a reply within, say, two or three weeks, it's likely dead and forgotten. Uh, in that case, it's totally fine to, to ask again, hey, did I something wrong or something? Um, but in the, if that happens, actually, uh, uh, because sometimes that helps to get the thing running because the developer had, had a stress or was on vacation. But if you do that, also look at your own report again, if it really was decent, uh, maybe that was the reason why it was um, uh, ignored. Also, new kernel versions um, were re likely released in the meantime. It might be a good idea to, to recheck that, especially when there's a, an RC1, new RC1 um, from a new release is, uh, is getting out um, because there are lots of changes um, go in and lots of um, um, fixes. And if you don't get any help or if it's unsatisfying, that sometimes, help, uh, sometimes happens because, yeah, as I said, Linux is done by volunteers. Then you need to try to help yourself, maybe find others that are, uh, have the same problem or, or, or uh, something like that and team up with them. The reporting issues document um, uh, has something about it. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, that's actually, um, um, to, to be true, truth, to, truth to be told, it's actually uh, the most important aspects. If you really want more details or have some corner case, you want to re read the reporting issues, which is quite long, or, or a small book actually maybe, um, uh, that cover, tries to cover all the questions you have. And uh, the things I mentioned, the different steps are also in similar form in the, in the document. And there's a reference section where, which explains each of those steps in more detail. So 19 steps. So you might say, hey, is that crazy? Quick, quick uh, uh, argument about that. Yes and no, it's, um, it's a little bit crazy. But on the other hand, it's not uh, because most of those um, are quite uh, normal for bug reporting. And uh, some of the steps are also just there um, to in the interest of the reporter. Uh, for example, the first st um, step to ensure you have a suitable kernel or willing to install them, uh, make sure the people are aware what is coming in, uh, up, up for them and um, uh, to make sure they, they can decide at that point, are, are, am I willing to do that? And if I'm not, and they, then they can stop before investing uh, an hour or two or maybe even more into this bug reporting process. And backup tools is also similar it's in, in their own ter interest. Uh, searching for existing bug reports is also quite normal for, for, uh, for, <coughs> for open source pro uh, um, um, projects. Installing the, 
latest mainline kernel is something um, that most other, uh, installing the latest version is also what most other projects would like you to do as well. For the kernel, that's a little bit more crucial because it changes so, so fast. So yes, that's a little bit special, but only a little. Um, uh, but yeah, that makes bug reporting sadly a little bit hard. It would be easier if more, more um, distributions would ship vanilla kernels so people could easily test with them uh, on their regular distro. Um, some steps are also twice in there, like the tainted step and the uh, regression uh, step um, to check what's up with them. So in the end, it's just three things left that are uh, really special. That's locating the driver subsystem that's causing the issue. Like I said, in the um, Bacilla is uh, not really supported and you need to check it up in a maintainer's file. That's, um, that's a bit odd, but that's how it is these days. Um, I guess a lot of people would like some improvements in, on that front, um, but nobody sat down to do that. Yeah. Ensuring the kernel doesn't taint itself is also something special for the kernel, but it's a, it's a special software that's close to the hardware that helps. And the, checking the regression is also in your own interest because uh, that gives you the guarantee that it's fixed. So somewhat special, but not that special after all. So that brings me to the end. Let's sum things up. Yeah, kernel developers are only obliged to fix some issues. That's really something you should keep in mind. Um, even if most uh, de developers actually want to fix all regressions, they don't have to. And yeah, if their time permits, it sometimes can happen that your, your report gets ignored. ignored. Um, because sadly, most of the developers are short on time. Yeah, and poorly reported, report, uh, reported issues under, are then the first to be ignored. So that's why you want to submit a decent report um, um, and invest a few more minutes into that, like I showed. And this because it's in your interest to grab the developer's attention and interest in the, in the problem and to make it easy for, to, for them to help you. The kernel documentation has you covered there. And uh, the, the most important things are submit uh, the report to the appropriate place. As I said, the maintainer file explains that. And sure, the kernel rep uh, the report actually covers um, all the important aspects that are relevant for the developers. Um, but at the same time, it's still easy and quickly to grasp for everyone that writes it, uh, that reads it. And yeah, if, if in a doubt, uh, better omitted detail, that's often easier. And um, also make it obvious if an issue is a regression or severe issue to make sure uh, developers handle it with the appropriate uh, priority. It's also in your own interest to, to make sure the bug is quickly fixed if it's such a problem. But in the end, the most important thing actually is uh, you really should test and report with the kernel that's really fresh, untainted, and vanilla. That, that's uh, something most people actually do wrong. And with that, yeah, and you should also mention that in your, in your report that you did so. With that, I'm finally at the end. And are there any questions? There are mics here in the front if you have any questions. Or are there any questions from online no. don't be shy it's just lunch that's following we have time ah oh, there somebody coming I'm, I'm just curious how many bugs did you already report and how many of them got fixed <laughs> <laughs> I don't I've, I reported a few bugs, but, but it's not like I'm, I'm um, run into so, uh, that many bugs. The thing why I know how to do is I'm uh, tracking regressions for the Linux kernel. And so basically um, what, what I said, that those problems that need to be fixed. And um, that's why I read a lot of bugs. And um, that's why I see how, how many people get it wrong and uh, started writing this documentation. Um, but um, to get back to the real question, I uh, normally run this mainline RC kernels and every third or fourth release uh, there um, is one bug I, I report or want to report often somebody else did it already. So yeah, not that much. But it, as I said, that's a, those are development kernels. No. Ah, okay. Yeah. If if you if you're online, you still can um, write questions. Somebody here that's looking for it. 
So how many bugs did you have? Do you have kernel bugs often? A few people shake heads. <laughs> yeah, if, if nothing came in online, I'd say that's it. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Enjoy your lunch. And hey, I'm really in time. I still have 20 seconds left.